Aliens Explored is a podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? 31st of July 2020. That was the date when Aliens Explored was launched for the very first time time we dropped three episodes that day betty and barney hill phoenix lights and bob lazar since then we've covered a huge array of topics and it's been great fun exploring the world of ufos uaps call them what you will Join us here on Aliens Explored as we look back over the last year. This was recorded live on a Twitch stream and you will hear us referring to people who are making comments in the Twitch chat. Uh, But enjoy this retrospective on our one year anniversary. There we are, and we are live. Uh, welcome, Yay. viewers uh, and listeners, to Aliens Explored, uh, your weekly podcast where we explore the strange skies above us and hollow earths and and subterranean the, the depths of the sea and, and uh, yeah. behind the mirror. And- Everything. Every we explore everything here, don't we? Hello, Captain Quinn. Uh, good to see you here with us. Hey, Captain Quinn. Um, yeah. So I'm one of your hosts, Stu Jackson, and I'm the other guy, <laughs> Neil Kelly, I'm, with I'm a name. Your other host. <laughs> it's a bit different doing this, um, like visually, isn't it, Neil? It, it is a bit, yes. We've got a bit of a routine. Um, Fomiga. Yeah. Um, Fomage, or F-O-A. Fomage. Uh, hello. Yes, and it's Ty. Hello, Ty. Great Hi, Ty. to see you. Glad, glad you can join us. And hello to everyone else out there watching, whether it's on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, however you're, uh, however you're watching. Uh, welcome. Aaron if you then made it. Yes, hello Ben, yeah. our friend from Central Utah Paranormal. Um, so glad you could make it as well. Um, but yeah, if you, if you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, because we're streaming to that now as well, come on over to Twitch and join in the Twitch chat as well. Uh, that's very kind of you to say, Ty. Um, we're the best, Neil. Uh, can't <laughs> argue with that. Thanks, mm. Ty. Yeah. Mm. So we're here um, doing this very, very special because this is exactly one year to the day since we launched Aliens Explored. Now, Neil, um, it was me that came to you with the idea of doing Aliens Explored. Uh, has it been what you expected? Yeah, you <laughs> um, I think so. First of all, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 humor the old bastard um, um yeah it's been it's been fun it's been fun it's it's opened my eyes to to things um the, yeah, and I, I think we've we've we've, we've got a, an, an audience who seem to think it's some sort of fun as well so they seem to agree with us so definitely well we've made uh, we've made some friends through this which is absolutely amazing and there's there's a a proper community out there which is absolutely incredible i mean i never imagined for one moment um it will be what it is now and it's going from strength to strength thank you ty uh happy anniversary to us indeed indeed Thanks, Uh, raising a glass of water um water cause we're gonna be professional yeah and and on the yeah we, we could just sit here and get completely melted in front of our audience i have week. i have done that on a stream with you in the past neil on i remember i remember actually your behavior wasn't as bad as you seem to think it was neil. 
I don't know, when I listened back and edited it, it was really <laughs> embarrassing. Uh, yes, Ty, you toast us with a whiskey. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll be Ty. having a, a small snifter of uh, Tamnavuli myself later to celebrate. Um, but yeah, so so one year we... Yeah, Ty says he weren't that bad. Yeah, I agree. He, he wasn't that bad. Oh, okay. I think when you, listen, when you listen to yourself, you just... I am yeah, you're hypercritical. Self, very self-critical uh, when it comes to mm. these things. Uh, so I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it. But yeah, fifty-four episodes later, uh, which, if anyone's doing the maths, um, does work out because we actually dropped the first three episodes in one. Um, so yeah, the, the maths does tie up. It, it was a ploy, a ploy. So. It was a ploy, uh, and yeah, I, w- I was advised by by a, a mutual friend of ours, Neil uh, Dan Thompson, uh, who runs the Danger Club podcast. He said, um, "No, if you're doing a podcast, make sure you drop at least three episodes in one go uh, when you start off, so that everyone's got something to listen to and something to get their teeth into." So yeah, it was a cunning ploy, mm. and. And here everyone is joining us for it. Uh, so absolutely fantastic. So so today I thought we'd have a look back on all the different topics that we've talked about. Not not in any great deal of depth because that would take a... <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk fast. <laughs> a bit of a long time, absolutely. Um, but, uh, but yeah... Um, but yeah, to have Ty a bit of a look back. Um, yeah, Ty started listening in September last year. September, yes. Well, that's the great thing about podcasts, isn't it? Is you can pick them up whenever you like and just go back and mm. listen to the back catalogue. Um, but that, that's um, that's pretty soon after we started. We started. In, uh, well, in we started on the thirty first of July. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, two months later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Yes, yes. First few episodes, mm. Ty binged and then had to wait a week. Yeah, yeah I've I've been there with podcasts I listen to. And it, <laughs> it can be like, oh yeah, and I'm like really listening to like several a day, and then all of a sudden, Ooh. no, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> seven days per episode is unacceptable. It really is. Mm. Um, yeah, fantastic. So, uh, of course, the other thing we're going to do today as well is announce the winner of our competition. Do you want to remind everyone what the competition is, Neil? Yes. Yeah, so, so, bear my chest. We'll show my chest. On, on our T-shirt logo, there, there's uh, Stu and there's me. And um, we we had a competition to find a name for the little grey guy who's, uh, who's looking at us with a, an expression that's difficult to read, whether he's you know, viewing us as potential victims or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just annoyed with us, or oh, he's he's pleased to be on our podcast. Uh, it's, any of those? It's or, enigmatic, or, isn't it? Enigmatic, enigmatic. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? Let's. Uh, I'll move over to the page with the artwork, so uh, our our viewers can see that a bit more easily. Because the artwork done by Sai Monstrous Art, and you can see all the details uh, to. Um, uh, to contact Sai and you know get your own artwork mm. done, <laughs> uh, mm. or tell him how great he is, and uh, there. But yeah, it's definitely an enigmatic. Ty thinks he's looking yeah. at us as food. Um, okay. Mm. So do grey um, aliens eat soylent green? That's the thing. A soylent green is. Sure they did process this in some ways. <laughs> also quite, Ty's also quite critical about the frequency of our. Yes. <laughs> only one every seven days <laughs> uh, ab- <laughs> absolutely um, yeah so it is quite an, I always thought that this grey alien was looking annoyed because we're ignoring him because we're facing the camera our backs are to him basically mm. so it's like but it's look, all about him it's as if we're yeah, look, you, yeah you we're talk about UFOs here I am yeah you know, huh? <laughs> it's, it's talking about you as if you're not in the room. Um, but it can be whatever expression you like. And of course, as an alien, he wouldn't express himself the way you and I express ourselves necessarily. Not He'd necessarily. Be alien. Hmm. 
Mm. <laughs> anyway, so yes, so we'll be announcing the winner uh, of a fancy, fancy T-shirt like ours, and they're really exclusive. Uh, basically, there are only four people on the planet with T-shirts like this uh, currently. There's Neil and myself and our <coughs> friends from Central Utah Paranormal. Um, and, hello uh, to Octo UK. Uh, 77, hi, hi. Us. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of our friends from Central Utah Paranormal, Neil, uh, you're not mm. aware of this, but I had a parcel in the post uh, yesterday. Ooh. And uh, Ben has very kindly sent us t shirts. <laughs> wow. There we go. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so they're absolutely awesome. So I've got yours, Neil. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, if you look on the back, uh, wow, you'll see we get a shout out. So there we go. Hey. <laughs> so, so absolutely yeah, not, brilliant. not just a generic T-shirt, but actually specially, specially tailored for us. Yeah. So absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very very much, Ben. Um, oh, Octo UK has got an alien tale for us. Uh, well, do you know what? Stick that in an email to us, uh, your tale, and uh, that's maybe one we can talk about on the show. Uh, but today it's just really about this retrospective looking back at the stuff we've already talked about, seeing if mm. we've changed our minds, perhaps. Um, and, uh, yeah, we will see. Uh, so... I mentioned that our... Uh, oh, hello, uh, Michelle. Lovely to see you here as well. Um, all the way from the USA. All Hi, the way Michelle. from the... Yeah, we've got a few viewers in the USA. In fact, most of our viewers are in the USA, uh, which is mm. absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, fantastic. So, I mentioned that the first three episodes all dropped together. Uh, this time, ex do you know, 11 minutes ago to the year. <laughs> three episodes together Neil why don't you tell us about the first episode that we launched well the very first one we did was about uh, Betty and Barney Hill a story from the early 1960s of, a, of an alien abduction yes uh, as I recall yeah and um, possibly well, certainly one of the most famous abduction cases out there probably the, the first publicly talked about uh, abduction case, mm. like you say, from the 1960s. Um, so do you, do you remember when we talked about them back a long ago? Um, I, I do, and I think one of the things I've been finding as, as we discuss these issues, it's um, many of them provided a great sort of insight into, I suppose, mainly, because mainly what we're talking about happens in the United States, but into society in the United States and mm. the way society responds to these stories. And because uh, because Barney and Betty Hill were kind of fringe characters anyway, weren't they, due to their racial mix? Yes. As I recall. Yes. Uh, but, um, certainly it was in an the unusual 1960s situation. Was, yeah. In the 1960s was unusual and and frowned upon in many quarters. And it, it would mean that if you're in a mixed race marriage, you wouldn't uh, raise your head above the parapet mm. and start telling tales that people don't, especially tales that people don't want to hear. Yeah. So it's it's quite an unusual story in that respect. And we did one more recently, didn't we? A, a story about the um, about the loggers, Travis and, uh, Walton. Of course, that well, that Travis, was last week's episode. In fact, yeah, and 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 all the all the hell that was dumped on their heads as a result of, of their telling this story. Yeah. By people who really didn't want that story told. So that's, for that's whatever reason. quite interesting that you're seeing it. That almost like bookended at the beginning and the end of our first year. Uh, you can see parallels yeah. within those two stories. That, that, that's it, it's, a, it's a theme that, that's, that's run through. I mean, if, if you're talking about a, a society being visited by alien beings you have to it makes you look at that society a little bit more closely isn't it yes 
Yes, definitely. Um, Ty has has commented that, of course, with the Betty and Barney Hill uh, discussion, that was when you were at your most critical. Um, <laughs> both Ty and Michelle uh, now think you're a secret believer. <laughs> well, I, I have my I have my off days, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of I kind of blow hot and cold on it, really. Mm. I yeah. mean, yeah, certainly there's a lot of things we've discussed here. There is no prosaic explanation. We just no. don't know. And, and one possible explanation is that it's, I suppose, the ex- one explanation you've got to go for is that um, it, it, it happened exactly as the person telling you the story ha- said it happened. Because you've got nothing to, nothing to discredit it with. Well, it's. Um, I mean, it's always tricky when you've only got one person's witness mm. statement, and and that's it. That's your only sort of evidence. Um, mm. That does make it very difficult, of course. But uh, but that's when you get into really looking into the nitty gritty of well, what would their motive be in in putting this story out? What would they hope to achieve from it? Um, you and know. that's that's another fact you have to take into account. Do they have ulterior motive for telling this story? And yeah, you see, some people say, "Well, yeah, they were self publicists. They wanted to make themselves famous." And the fact that it didn't, the fact that it brought down a shit ton of crap on on their heads, it just mean, meant that it was it was still their ploy, but it backfired. It, it could be poor judgment um, mm. that's caused that. Absolutely, but uh, Ben Cano yeah. eighty one. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, hello Ben. Uh great to see you here joining us as well. Um yeah, so Betty and Barney Hill, that was your that was your baptism of fire into this yeah. this culture, uh so to speak. Mm. Um but after that uh we went on to discuss the Phoenix Lights uh mm. cases. Because there's more than one. Mm. Uh, we we discussed two yeah. of them. Um yeah. both sets but of they, Delta I've Lights. Said, tire- Ty has just laid cards on the table and saying it's either all rubbish or it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> so not, not leading one way or the other. Right? I don't think even I'm that binary in my view, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think there's a lot... I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a believer. Um, mm. But I don't automatically accept everything. Um, in fact, uh, I had a friend send me... Um, some footage taken from an aeroplane of an alleged UFO quite recently, and mm. uh, it was it was problematic in many ways for me. Um, for one thing, there was like none of the other passengers were commenting on it. Um, there was sound from it. Um, there was the camera work was a little bit too good for a handheld phone <laughs> um, pointing mm. out of an aeroplane window. Uh, yeah, there, there was there was issues. So you know, instantly I was very skeptical of it. Um, Mind you, those fans do have some good cameras on them these days. Oh, they do. <laughs> they do. Uh, well, they make movies with them now. Yeah. Oh. Although they're a bit flat. Anyway, that's going down a down a tangent, mm. which uh, well, yeah. that is the hallmark which of is, aliens is, explored. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We do have a lot to discuss. So, yeah, so Phoenix Lights. Um, and this was kind of, a, a, I mean, very different view from Betty and Barney Hill, where it's just their word. Um, mm. Here you've got hundreds of witnesses coming forward, all having seen the same thing, and, um, you know, some well, of that, them that police the officers. That there was confusion on that one over what people had seen. And some people were talking about the, this this formation of lights flying in a flying a, a triangular formation mm-hmm. or a V formation and then someone with a telescope said no actually each light is two lights it's the two lights of a, a plane but they're just so far away that it looks like one light you can only see one point of light and and then there was that line of flares that were dropped and it was this was the one where reporters were talking about one thing whilst footage of the other thing was showing on, on, yes. on television and there were which, two which instances. Made people think, well, yeah, 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 two instances. Mm. Yeah, but when 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 people who live near a, a military airbase who are used to seeing all kinds of craft in the sky 
at all hours of the day or night doing all sorts of manoeuvres. When they suddenly start reporting something unusual, you've got to think, well, yeah, they, they would have a good a good benchmark for what constitutes normal. Mm. So when they say that there's something really abnormal and then the military deny that they've got anything up there, but there was also a question, well, when, when they asked the, the, the local base if they had any planes up, they said, well, no, we have them, but it wasn't quite sure they meant, well, is there actually a plane from their base or is it a plane from another base that you just, you didn't think we were asking about that? So you're just going to say, well, none of our planes are up. Yeah, there's... Not going to talk about anything else. I mean, there's a, there's a number of possible suggestions, mm. but, um, yeah, it's a, mm. it's a tricky one. Uh, moving on to our third one, then. Now, I remember you being very, very critical of this guy. This was Bob Lazar, wasn't it, who yeah. claimed that he was recruited to reverse engineer UFO technology. Mm. Now, do we do we have any evidence of any technology in our daily lives now which could be reverse reverse engineered crashed UFO technology? Theoretically. I mean, obviously, no, nobody has come forward and said, this came from a UFO. Uh, that would be very nice if they mm. did, but, um, yeah. but fibre optic. Mm. Um, that seemed to come sort of out of nowhere, um, at least from a layman's perspective. Uh, silicon chips. Mm. Uh, that we can make these things out of sand that will, that yeah. will process information. We yeah. can transmit information in the form of light. Yeah, but I think we went from yeah, valves to silicon chips in a very well, valves short... Valves to transistors. Valves to transistors, and, yeah. But but mm. it was in a very short space of time. Um, there's laser technology. Uh, you know, and you look at CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays now. Um, you've got VR mm. technology. I mean, there, there's so much... That, that could theoretically have come from reverse engineered. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and Oct Octo UK has made a cut. I particularly like uh, Star Trek is responsible for uh, for, for 15 <laughs> TVs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd go on that. Definitely responsible for, for me having one. Um, mm. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, so. so as I say, I, I remember you were very... I don't want to say dismissive because you, you, you took everything on board, but uh, you were definitely fitting the naysayer role when it came to Bob Lazar. Mm -hmm. um, do you look back at that situation at him differently now? Um, again, it... it it's one of these things, you know, I worked on a secret base and we did all this stuff and if only you knew and what have you. Know, yeah, and I've got nothing to corroborate it. That, that's always something you take with a with a, a pinch of salt. Um, but why would he do it? Uh, that's the whole... Maybe we'll have mm -hmm. another episode where we revisit uh, and rediscuss Bob Lazar. Ties with me. Should ties with me believes Bob Lazar 100% mm. because I mean we there, there was some commentary we we're looking at it for another story more recently where um, the host of a it was the narrator of a film was talking about all these UFOs that have been shot down and in one breath he's saying these, these beings are evolved millions or possibly billions of years beyond us but somehow we're shooting down their, their UFOs. And that doesn't... To me, that sounds like, well, you know, like a, a B-1 bomber was flying over a, a remote Pacific island when it was brought down by a tribe of hunter-gatherers. Mm. You know, that, that's the kind of technology gap you're talking about. The same bunch of hunter-gatherers who went out in their in their war canoes last week and captured the crew of a nuclear submarine. So, you know, it just... Their technology is way too far beyond us. Well, to, for me to believe that we can shoot these things down. Well, yes, um, but what about them crashing through accident or equipment failure? They seem to do that an awful lot. Do they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do. <laughs> well, I, I, I only know of two alleged 
UFO crashes. No, three. Three, sorry. Oh. Three. Three. Well, there was the Roswell, wasn't there? The... Uh, there was Roswell, there was the old Wild West one, and there was uh, the one in Germany. In the Black oh, Forest. Oh, the Black Forest crash. Yeah. Um, Which led us on to a discussion about Nazis. It did, and we've had many Reverse discussions about Nazis. And, uh, and we've had a, uh, a lot of discussions about Nazis. <laughs> they, they do come up a lot because they did produce some ex- astonishing technology oh, yeah. in, in the Second World War under very extenuating circumstances, i.e. being bombed all the time, but they somehow managed to produce you know, in a war that started with cavalry charges and biplanes that by the end of it they, were, they, they had jet aircraft, ballistic missiles, drones, mm. and um, the, and then a nuclear weapon ending it all. So it, it was you know, an awful lot of tech. And... and there's little doubt that the the Nazis did have the better technology, um, but as well as as, uh, as well, certainly Americans and British have learned in in since then that that, that doesn't necessarily win you the war. It can mm. do, but uh, if you're up against a determined enemy and you're they fight you're fighting on their terms, then technology the, the German the Nazis or the German Tiger tank was a match for two or three Russian T-34 tanks, which are much more um, primitive, but unfortunately they would always be coming up against four or five T-34 tanks. Just the sheer numbers were were overwhelming them. Yes, yes. Um, Okay, moving on, because... Gosh, we're we're half an hour in already. <laughs> We've only got three episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're, we're doing all fifty-five, are we? Uh, fifty-four. Yes. Why not? Um, let's let's go through now. The next one. Uh, we went all the way to the moon, and we talked about the alleged Apollo Eleven UFO encounter. This was um, alien craft parked on the dark side of the moon. Mm. Well, there was one that bits. followed them up for a while, en route, mm. and yes, alleged that there's that sort of time of sort of radio silence. Alleged, yeah, um, that was an interesting one, uh, and then we went to watch a movie after that, didn't we? We did, yeah. What was it? The um, the Whitley Whitley Streber. Does he pronounce it Streber? Uh, I, I think we we had a discussion about it at the time, and mm. uh, I think it was Streber. I think, yeah, I think you you said to me it was Streber because it's German, isn't it? I, I'm I'm just following German pronunciation rules. I E is pronounced E E I is pronounced I. Apart from in America, where a lot of a lot of Americans. Oh, well, it is E I, so it's We're, Streber. Is it E I? I've got it spelled. I've got it spelled as. Um, Oh no! You wrote it as Strieber, S T R I E B E. Oh right. Which to a German would read Strieber. Ah right, Strieber then. Striber. Okay. Strieber. Um Well, yeah, uh, and we watched the film Communion. <laughs> yes. Uh, which which is... wasn't so much UFOs, was it? It was inter interdimensional beings that were. Well, we don't know. I mean, that's the thing. Him. It's definitely a whacked out film, though. That one. Hmm. Very very strange. Was, uh, it, it was Christopher? Was it Christopher Walken? Christopher Walken, yeah, well, yeah. So, give it a watch. I think it's um, was it was it free to watch on Amazon Prime? I don't remember. Uh, no, we had to pay on Amazon Prime, but it's still worth it. Uh, still worth watching, definitely. Not, not paying very much, indeed. Um, and then after that, we it got a bit dark because we started talking about cattle mutilations. Yeah. We? Now you'd not come across the phenomenon of cattle mutilations before that. I seem to recall. Um, not, not this kind of very, very precise cattle mutilation. I mean, I know cattle mutilation had been associated with, with um, Satanists mm-hmm. and with, with um, basically people with mental health problems, and and and, I suppose just personal revenge or sadism and. Or, or, or a revenge directed against a, a farmer who you don't like. I'll go and mutilate his cattle or his sheep. It's a good way to discredit anyone who reports a phenomenon that can't be explained, isn't it? 
Mm. Mm. Well, that's the thing. If there is a if there is a prosaic explanation, am I using that word right? Prosaic to prosaic? say that yeah, yeah, there is a more sort of worldly, rational explanation. Then people say, well, that's obviously what happened. Mm. If you've got a you've got a prosaic explanation and one that involves suspending your disbelief in the paranormal or in alien visitors or or such, then um, well, yeah, we'll just go with the prosaic because that um, if there's no reason not to, that's or if there is a reason not to, we'll, we'll just brush that bit aside and just ignore that bit. Well, well, Ty makes a good comment. This would be mutilation by a trained surgeon with no blood at the scene. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, and yeah. uh, Octo UK asked a question uh, earlier. Um, if we believe uh, that anti-grav technology is being withheld from the public, um, well, I suppose they would. I mean, I, I, I would imagine if any kind of UFO technology is being reversed, engin- reverse engineered, it will be the, the the US military who will be doing it to to gain a, a competitive advantage. And yeah, they won't be letting that out. They'll be keeping it very, very quiet because that, that kind of defeats the objective. But do you think that's actually happened, though? <sighs> yeah. I can only speculate, can I? Because if they keep it hidden... Yeah. Uh, uh, no, and I think it's the same for me. I think I'd have to see um, some evidence or... You know, even if it's circumstantial evidence, I'd, I'd have to see something to to suggest that anti-grav technology was out there um, mm. in order to... But 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 I think it would be withheld for a different reason than, than you, perhaps. I think it's all to do with oil. And oil, obviously, is the power base of the planet, basically. Mm. If you start coming up with technologies that don't require oil or, you know, free transport and things like that that definitely won't be made public definitely not paranormal ben mentions that he lives about 70 miles from skinwalker ranch i think out in utah way 70 miles isn't very far not not yes. like if you live in london where actually seven miles is too far to go and visit someone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed um fantastic so um can I ask, have you been there, Ben? So Ben Ben says the place is no joke. So that kind mm. of implies that. Uh, it, that uh, but yeah, um, developing. I mean, we have of necessity. You know, a, a lot of these stories involve the U.S. Air Force, mm. um, whose whose primary focus is always going to be on the threat that something could pose, that some craft has entered our, has violated our airspace, seemingly with impunity and is of such advanced technology we can't just shoot it down, that's something to worry about, isn't it? And, mm. and several... Um, Senator Senator Rubio of Florida... Is it Florida? Florida has, has said that well, he's, he's, he, he's fine with craft coming from other dimensions or other worlds violating our airspace. What he's worried about is that it might be the Russians or the Chinese who have suddenly developed this... Yeah. This game-changing technology, and then they can violate our airspace without, with, with impunity. Yes. Well, speaking mm. of that exact thing, uh, we talked about it, although in from a historical point in episode seven, didn't we? Episode seven. Oh, the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Um, because that was uh, this unknown thing that people were scared. It was the the enemy. Yeah, which but it didn't seem to do much, or it seemed to be there. There was speculation that they had some kind of EMP weapon, electromagnetic pulse. But it could be, you know, how these days with modern cars, you've got all the electronics and whatever, and and the police, I think, have the technology to stop a car. They can just press a button and send out a beam, and it switches off all the electronics, mm. and and the the thing just comes to a halt. They, they, they can do that but they can't do that if you're driving an old car if you're driving a 1960s ford mustang muscle car that won't work because you haven't got all that electronics in it and it maybe maybe it was the foo fighters were the craft you know that, that, were, that were trying to attack allied aircraft and apparently axis aircraft as well using their primary weapon which was 
which was no good because the craft they were attacking weren't advanced enough to be <laughs> be harmed by it. Well, uh, combustion engines do use electronics quite extensively because they need uh, power to the spark plugs. That needs to be uh, distributed in the correct sequence and at the correct speed uh, in association with how the pistons move. Uh, but that's not electronics. That's, that's electrics, isn't it? It's just it's just yeah, the engine generating electricity. Um, oh, yeah, we're which, not talking computers. The the plugs. I mean, modern it's not cars. It's not you shoot a yes. beam that and switch it off. No. Whereas, mm -hmm. whereas a modern car does have all sorts of... Yeah, but, an, know, but an EMP would affect... Because uh, it'd kill a car battery. An EMP. Would it? I would have thought. Mm. But if it's a, if it's a diesel... A diesel only needs the electric motor to start the engine, and then it runs on compression. Of this. It doesn't have any electronics at um, all. Yes, you still need power tank. to the glow plug to heat that up, though, uh, so that you get ignition, even with the compression. No, you, you, you need you need the power to the glow plug to start the thing going, but then ah. the glow plug once it's going, it's compression ignition. Just the the amount it compresses the the fuel air mix is enough to generate enough heat to cause ignition the glow plugs just needed to start it anyone who's what? flown model airplanes will know that you need the glow plug to get your engine going and then you disconnect it and the thing the thing flies off okay. um there was a do you remember the um there was a russian aircraft called the fox bat and this was around about 1980 81 i was in the army in germany at the time and a russian a soviet pilot defected to the west he had one of these new aircraft and he flew it to japan and defected and American specialists examined this this craft, and they thought, no, this is a this is a hoax. This can't be. This thing is this thing is too primitive. It didn't even have transistors. It had valves, um, and it's they said well, it's made of steel, which is you know, better than wood, but it's not really what you want to make a plane out of. And it just seemed too primitive. They couldn't believe it. But then it took them a while to realise that this was a plane that could survive EMP. It's been deliberately kind of made out of primitive technology back to basics technology so you have a plane that can fly across a nuclear battlefield right that's what the russians were russians were good at coming up with low-tech solutions uh, paranormal ben said uh, going back to the um the skinwalker ranch tried once to get in it was all cameras and little entrances um that has friends on the navajo reservation nearby Mm -mm. And apparently it's not as locked down now. So Ben, you, yeah, you wanna, you wanna, <laughs> your mission, Ben, should you decide to accept it, oh, pop fantastic. over there, take a shifty. Uh, now I'm conscious. Time's getting on, so let's um, let, let's go on. We've we've gone off on a digression as we always do. As we knew we would. <laughs> uh, so. We talked um, after Foo Fighters about a much more recent case, uh, the 2006 O'Hare Airport incident. Um, At O'Hare International Airport in Chicago, where there was a, a, a craft seen by several people just hovering. Mm. Yeah. Above the, Remains the a mystery building. to this day. Um, and then it was one that I think you found particularly <laughs> fascinating and intriguing. Did I? Uh, the episode after, oh, the, yeah. Oh, I found this interesting, yeah. Oh, the episode, this episode or the one after? We talk the about? one after, episode eight. Uh, episode nine, sorry. Oh, the alien implants. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that one I think People got with your... mysterious little, little bits of debris stuck in them mm. that they said were, were put there by... Now, I got a sense... Other things. And correct me if I'm wrong in this, that this for you was almost the start of a change of paradigm, of a of a shift in your naysaying. <laughs> Would that be accurate? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to... I, I, I've never... Well, I suppose I, maybe when we started this, I did see myself in the role of debunker. <laughs> But having seen what what debunkers are like and the kind yeah. of agendas they have, I thought, no, that's not how I want to see myself. I, I, I'm here as the uh, the knave, the, uh, the 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 doesn't know anything about it. And goodness me, is that really true? Or what? Are, you know that that sort of that sort of thing. But here was physical evidence. Here was stuff being removed from people's bodies that was made of materials that that are not of this world. 
Mm. As I recall. Yeah. It's been yeah. a while. You're recalling very, very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting, interesting. Uh, then we went, I mean, we've mentioned it already today, the uh, 1936 Black Forest UFO crash. Um, and yes. af- after that, what did we talk about after that, Neil? Huh. We, we, we were on your home turf. I, I seem to remember I caused some offence <laughs> when I expressed some scepticism. I, I didn't. It, it shows how I, I didn't know you that well back in those days when, when, I, when I expressed scepticism over crop circles. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but these guys have admitted doing it. You know, yes. Plank of wood, bit of rope. <laughs> oh, well, these guys, Doug and Dave, they've admitted to it also. That must be the <laughs> yeah, because, because that, that's what you come back to, don't you? There, there's a, a prosaic explanation, or someone someone pro- who says, t- 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 "No, actually, it was me. I did that." Yeah, um, and uh, people say, "Oh, yeah, that must be it. That must be that must be what causes it." It was Doug and Dave. Yeah, because they um, said they did it. I mean, it, it's what, what is it? Occam's razor, isn't it? The most, um, the simplest answer the sim- is the. You know, that's it doesn't always apply because sometimes there are convoluted and complex answers to things. It, it's um, it's dangerous territory as well, I think, Occam's razor. Yeah, yeah. Just to, to look just, for a simple explanation. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, but after that we talked, I think this was the first one... Was this first one we agreed uh, on something probably not being genuine? Uh, it was the Black Knight Satellite. Yeah, this strange shape that's been. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's an interesting. It's an interesting. So, and of course, the the jury's still out for a lot of people on that. Um, what did we talk about then? Um. Well, I know we were going to talk also about um, about our our t-shirt competition at some point. Uh, Are you gonna yes. Do a rundown of the time. That's a good. That's a good time to talk about just, it. Just so we got tight excited about the Black Knight satellite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, let's talk about something else. Definitely want to know what it is. Um, so our t-shirt competition. Uh, we mentioned this at the beginning of the street. I've lost my mouse on the computer. There it is. Uh, so. We have our our lovely, lovely artwork there, as done by Simon Monstrous Art, which we have put onto T-shirts. And uh, as we mentioned, these are incredibly exclusive. Only Neil, mm. myself, and our friends um, Ben and Randy from Central Utah Paranormal have these T-shirts. Uh, they are incredibly exclusive. So we said... As a competition, if you can name our grey alien chappy in between us on it, um, come up with a name that we really, really like, and you get a T-shirt. Uh, now, we will be announcing the winner of this competition later on in the show. Uh, but we have a... I mean, we, uh, to say we were inundated, I mean, we had so many um, suggestions and... They've been absolutely brilliant. We, we've had an absolute blast reading them. Um, so thank you to well, everyone who's who's put in suggestions. We're but still attracting the brightest and the best in our audiences, aren't we? Definitely. The, the imagination that's gone into into these is, is absolutely incredible. Um, so, of course, the first thing we had to do was narrow it down so... Here in no particular, actually, I was going to say no particular order. No, in alphabetical order, <laughs> is our top ten favourites. Um, Neil, do you want to start us off with A? Oh, well, are we going to alternate, or are we going to? Yeah, to... let's alternate. Why not? Okay, so the first one, first one up is Axel. Yes, um, a <laughs> great name, great name. It's about with a K. Rather than an X. A K S E L. Yeah, uh, Axel, brilliant one. Uh, then we had uh, <laughs> quite a convoluted one Dribble Teevingston. <laughs> or Dribble it's for short. Dribble for short. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, it's Frank. Which is nice oh, and yeah. plain and yeah. simple. Uh, and another fairly plain and simple one uh, Graham. 
um, who is actually named after this particular listener's cat. And, and not a play on the word grey. Sort of grey am. Well, I but think it one, is. It kind of is, but this, in this case, it's explicitly not. It's named after the listener's cat. Um, hello to hello to Grey and the cat. Um, next one up is Greg. Yep, not Greg. Greg. Am I saying Greg. 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 Yeah, yeah, like Greg, but with a little, little extra Y in there. Greg. Indeed, and uh, and grey, of course, being the the theme here. Uh, while we're on the G's in particular, uh, Gus the Grey. Gus the Grey. <laughs> I liked. Next up is Corn, K A W N. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what I. So how would an American, how would an American would pronounce it? Corn, right? Corn. I think so. Yes. K A W N. I mean, in in in, in, in English, us us so. Uh, Londoners certainly. If it was spelt C O R N, we'd pronounce it the same way. We'd still say corn, whereas in America would say corn. They would give more emphasis to the R because it's a rotic language. But we'd say car- carn. How say carn? Yeah, because they'd say hark. They'd call a hawk a hark. So maybe it's carn. Uh, how would not the, not the rough of carn, but how would an American say dawn? Like the dawn chorus. Dawn. dawn. They say dawn. Corn. They say they say it's dawn. Dawn. It uh, depends what part of oh. America, I suppose, isn't it, as well. Mm. Anyway, moving yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. We're always we digressing. digressing. We're digressing. <laughs> simple, give us a simple list of ten things to say, and we will mm. digress in the middle. <laughs> mm. uh, the next one I had to put in our top ten, Picard. <laughs> as the Trekkie that I am. <laughs> Of course, yeah. That, that was that was that was sent in by someone who knows you. Knows yeah. And and number nine in the list is Roger. Hello, Roger. Roger. Uh, like on Family Guy, I'm assuming, where they've got a grey alien called or, Roger. Um, Not Family Guy. American, American Dad. Dad. American Dad. American yeah. Dad. I thought, yeah. Yeah. Roger. And um, and then we had Roswell, but Roswell with a Z rather than uh, an S. Uh, which apparently they this particular listener used an old um, UK cartoon called Alias the Jester, and he had an alien pet dog called Boswell. So it's like instead of Boswell, it's Roswell. So that was uh, that was nice. I had some and and you know to anyone else whose whose suggestions we didn't mention, you know we we absolutely love them all. But you've seen how we struggled to get through a list of ten. There's no way we mm. could have. I mean, we could just spent two hours just like going yeah. through them all. Um, but it, yes, if we spent an hour trying to get through fifty episodes on fifty odd episodes of a, a podcast, uh, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> let's uh, let let's let's change this up a little bit. How we're doing this because I'm conscious we are three quarters of an hour in already, mm. and we will, like I say, be announcing the winner. Of that T-shirt later on in the show. <laughs> a few minutes of the right um, way, okay. So we got uh, through the first twelve. Do you know what? Let's let's look at the next three, um, hmm. which were Skinwalker Ranch, The Hollow Earth Theory, and Sergeant Yoakum and Lucky Thirteen. Um, do any of hmm. those three sort of jump out at you, Neil? Um, well, the Hollow Earth Theory. I know we we were plunged back into the Nazis again. Yes, yep. apparently they believed the Earth was hollow, and didn't they lay claim to an area of Antarctica, where it's mm-hmm. been speculated that oh, they found the entrance to this underground world, and that's where they all went after mm. the war. Yes, yes, quite, quite possibly, um, and, and developed their super technologies. It, yeah, very interesting, and of course the Skinwalker Ranch is what uh, Ben will, Ben was telling us about earlier. Um, hmm. then the, the next three after that we did a Halloween special we talked about acclamation through movies which is something I still I will die on this hill, you, you, basically. you believe we're being, we're, we're being prepared for, uh, for a totally. contact with that totally um i am 100 percent behind that uh we talked about scientology very carefully it has to be said because they, they are known for their litigiousness yes, the uh, amongst other things uh and uh we were very very fortunate to have uh a story in from a listener themselves uh rudy payen 
Yes. Uh, you remember Rudy's yes. story. In Texas, where they were, they um, encountered a, a UFO. Yeah, that's it. It was. I mean, it was it, it was as much a story from his family, wasn't it? Ty, uh, Ty agrees with you. We're being acclim- a, oh, acclimated. Totally. totally. Of course we we're are. Conditioned. Ty agrees because mm. he's sensible. <laughs> Not that I'm biased. Um, I think yeah. Um, I I can go along with that to to an extent. But I think well, who's who's doing the acclimating? Is it the the the, the Greys have got directly in touch with Hollywood producers and saying, look, we need to. You know, you you know that we're here. You're you're cool with us. We need to get, prepare the public, so we, we'll fund your movies with our with our um, extraterrestrial technology. We'll, we'll, we'll slip new inventions into the market, make a load of money, and you can release your blockbuster movies to prepare people um, for, for to, to, to be um, subjugated by us. Or, or is it actually our own rulers who are saying, "Well, you know, we we we've we've been friends with these aliens for a long time." Um, it's about time they took over the world and ousted us. <laughs> yeah. oh. Definitely. Uh, do you want to tell us about the next three on the list? Um, after Rudy, uh, there, were, there were the Pentagon UFO videos. Mm. The, these uh, videos that were released back in um, back in April last was it April last year? They, they officially released three videos of UFOs captured by, I think, mainly US Navy pilots. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and this led on to um, Donald Trump promising that, um, that all, all, all the US agencies are going to release all the information they have about UFOs. Um, this is us skipping it's... through these, by the way. Yes, this is, this is us skipping through these. So. So we, we did question the perhaps the political reasons for wh- why suddenly mm. they're acknowledging these things and saying we've seen these things we don't know what they are, and we're still questioning well, maybe we it do know to this day. We, we, we're we're going to we're going to release all the information we have on what they are at, at some point. Wow. Have they? That's the question. Yes. Mm. Um, after that came the the Thanksgiving special. Um, Thanksgiving isn't really a thing in England, but uh, in Britain, but uh, we acknowledge that for most of our listeners, Thanksgiving really is a thing. And we talked about the Native American star people, sometimes known as the sky people. Or the Anunnaki. Is it the Anunnaki? Mm. Uh, Yeah, uh, Anunnaki or Anastasi. Sorry, Anastasi. Mm. Anunnaki is the Sumerian. Yeah. Yeah. And Keep after it. that, we went to <laughs> Deputy Deputy Sheriff Val Johnson. Yes, yes, a incredible witness, UFO. if ever there was mm. one. Was this where the, the ball of light came into his car? Uh, uh, yes, was it, was that? that's, yes, that's Val Johnson. Yeah, uh, as depicted. Um, well, it only happened in 1979, so mm. this was after the movie of Extra... Uh, Close Encounters. Um, Close encounters of the mm-hmm. third kind had, had had been released. Yeah, well, but suddenly yeah. this. Do you know there's an interesting thing that you can categorise any event in the entirety, uh, not just of human history, but actually in the mm. history of the planet and and possibly even the entire universe, where it either happened before Close Encounters came out or after Close Encounters came out. Oh, so that, that's a kind of defining <laughs> moment, like like, uh, like 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 BC and AD. That's before yeah. close encounters. And... <laughs> Sorry, I'm being glib. Um, yeah, indeed. Uh, so that's what I, that's what our listeners have tuned in for. We then talked about Area Fifty Two, uh, otherwise known as Dugway Proving Ground. Uh, we talked about mm. Rendlesham Forest. And we had our Christmas special, uh, where we kept it very festive by discussing perhaps Jesus was an ET. Um, but Rendlesham Forest, uh, we I, I think we can announce this here to everyone, can't we? Um, we're planning, Neil and I, to do the UFO trail in Rendlesham Forest. Um, possibly as a live show as we're going through it, or possibly just videoing ourselves doing it and then then releasing it at a later date but uh planning to do that later this year covid allowing mm. we, Neil? ty says jesus 100 percent alien human hybrid 
Ooh. That's certainly and, a and theory. Also comments that, that there were UFO nuts before America was even America. Well, we are going to, and um, we've got an episode coming back, haven't we, that of, of, a, of a UFO. Was it a UFO battle in the skies over Nuremberg? The, 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 yes, over Nuremberg. Mm. Before, before that was Germany. Yeah. And I guess that was really before America was America. So, yeah. Oh, well before. Yeah. Well before. So we got, we got that coming up, Ty. You got that to, to look forward to. Before Great Britain existed. There you go. Yeah, well, Great Britain's only existed since 1707, hasn't it? Yes. With that's the Act correct. of Union signed by Queen Anne. Yeah. There we go. Not that we're digressing. <laughs> What's the next three? <laughs> Um, after Rendlesham Forest, we, oh, oh, Jesus was extraterrestrial. Um, oh, we've got um, Haim Eshed, mm. uh, an interesting character, a former director of space programs for the Israel, for the Israel Ministry of Defence, as I said, the Israeli Ministry of Defence, yeah. um, claimed that the, the US government was indeed in contact with extraterrestrials. Yes, yes. Um, very, very interesting character and very interesting things he has to say and and i for one consider him a very credible person well he's he's credible in terms of his military and scientific background this is a very very senior guy yeah um, who knows all about rocket science and things but of course it then begs the question has he lost his marbles in his old age mm -hmm. i mean did it beg the question i don't remember if he, we, we, yeah 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 <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> Yeah, we we discussed that on the episode, <laughs> <laughs> and and to be honest, I mean to all our listeners, you know, and, and listeners and viewers, um, mm. anything we're mentioning here, go back all the back catalogs there on aliensexplored dot com. Revisit these episodes, mm. uh, listen to them again. Challengers say you said this mm. thing and it was wrong, and you know, yeah, we we, yeah. we want to hear. Um, what else? Did we talk about? Uh, we talked about the Illinois UFO of January 2000. Yes. UFO yes. seen by several people, including four police officers on duty. Mm. Um, yeah. What that might have been. What did we decide it was in the end? Well, I did think we, it was... was it, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> no, it's a UFO. <laughs> it's unidentified. Hmm. Hmm. Ty says, leaks of US found archaeological crashed alien ships with dinosaur skeletons found in them. Mmm. I, um... Oh, we'll have to look into that. That's, 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 one, that's one for us to discuss yeah. in a future episode. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and yet, yeah, keep us going, because well, we're doing three episodes each okay. in a chunk. Um, okay, is it, is it still my turn? Yep. Yeah. Um, the Aurora, Texas, 1987 UFO. Oh, um, yes. The UFO crashed on a farm near Aurora in Texas. Um, the pilot died in the crash, was reportedly not of this world, and is buried at the Aurora Cemetery. Well, isn't because they eventually went to inhume the... Um, to ex exhume? Exhume the grave. Hmm. Um, and uh, it had disappeared. Even though there's photos hmm. of it and everything, it's gone. Um, yeah, very, very interesting case, that one. Uh, after that, the next three, we discussed... Oh, oh Amuamua. The, Amuamua, yeah. The strange... We thought it was a meteor, asteroid thing coming well, into the solar system that changed course. Is, is, is it the first object that's ever been tracked that's come from outside our solar system and has passed through it? I think it's the first one we've been able to track from its yeah. origin of outside. Um, I mean, it won't be the first one, obviously, because it's all mm. come ultimately from the, outside the, the solar system. That, that but followed, yeah, followed an erratic flight path. It changed direction. It suddenly accelerated in ways that couldn't yeah. be explained by gravitational pulls yeah. of the sun or, or releases of gas right. and things like that. Yeah, yeah that was a that was a, an interesting one. Uh, we discussed, of course, it was the announcement of the U.S. COVID bill and the release of information, which uh, we then went on to discuss. So we 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 discussed why mm. perhaps that was happening and theorized about what we might be talking about. Uh, and mm. then there was um, the Mariana Trench, the 
or Western Pacific Bio Twang, as it's otherwise called. Mm. Uh, strange sounds from deep in the bottom of the ocean. Which reminded people, apparently, of Star Wars sound effects. Yes. Well, we played so, it on and, the... and, and, and as you've said many times, if, if extraterrestrials are coming to this planet, what better place to hide their craft than the bottom of the ocean? Yep, absolutely. Well, there might I be mean, a better place than that. I've been I've been looking into something recently that we're going to talk about on a future episode. There might be a better uh, place. Uh, and that, that um, presupposes a technology that we don't don't have because when we hide our aircraft at the bottom of the ocean that we tend to say they've crashed don't we? well yes um but if they're coming from outside and they don't come from, back from a different planet or a different galaxy that definitely predisposes a different level of technology mm. um yeah what were the next three after that um the black vault special the <gasps> cia declassified yes, yes. um the, the Black Vault is a, is a website for, for, for our listeners. It's a website dedicated to releasing freedom of information access requests on UFOs and other materials from the CIA and other government bodies. Mm. Um, John Greenwell Jr. In, in the middle of last year received thousands of pages of UFO-related documents declassified by the CIA since the 1980s. Now, I, I think it's it's an old CIA trick, isn't it, when they're asked to release information. <laughs> we're skimming just, through, Neil. We're skimming yeah, through. We're skimming. <laughs> but I just, just want to say that the, the, the way the CIA release information when they're, when they're told to, and they obviously do it quite grudgingly, they'll release it in a form that just it'll be a truckload of paper, mm. not sorted by any kind of any, any particular way, and you've just got to trawl through it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It was a bit of a pain the way they did that. Mm. Mm. Episode 32, Russia's giant underwater humanoids. Yes. Yes, when they're trying to you... capture one of them. Yes. <laughs> um, that um, Lake Baikal in southern Siberia is the largest freshwater lake in the world and contains more water than all of the North American Great Lakes combined. Mm. Surface area slightly larger than Belgium. So. Yeah what creatures dwell in those depths. And I think we mentioned the map of Mundi in that episode, where if you look at the map of Mundi, yeah. which is, it's turned sideways because um, at the map of, on the map of Mundi, east is at the top, west yeah. is at the bottom, and north and south, left and right. Um, uh, but if you look at the sort of area of, of Siberia that's, that was that constituted the edges of the known world when the map of Mundi was drawn up, there are indeed giants drawn on it. So yes. who knows? There yes. were travellers' tales of giants from yeah, medieval times. That's it. Uh, the alien autopsy video. Yes, yes, of course. Um, and in fact, Michelle, who's who's watching, um, sent us an email about that one because uh, Michelle has the the original VHS still of that uh, wow. when it was first released. Yeah, that was a fascinating one fascinating one um so let's do a quick recap about our competition that we're running um yes so we uh you'll remember that our competition was to win a t-shirt with our artwork on it like neil and i are both sporting at the moment um <coughs> and what we asked you to do was give a name for our grey alien friend in the middle. Um, now we had some absolutely incredible, amazing, fantastic names throughout. We gave our top ten a short while ago. Um, let's let's narrow it down a bit, Neil. Let's give people our top four that we narrowed it down to. Are we going to alternate again? Let's do that. Okay. Um, so the first of the four is Dribble Teevingston, Dribble for short. Yes. Um, then there was Frank, which we really liked. And then there was Graham, named after the listener's cat. Yeah. And Greg. <laughs> so that's, a, that's to our say. top four. That's those a... are a, so one of those is going to win a t shirt and, and, um, to everyone else who entered, I mean, thank you so so much. 
uh, for your entries. Absolutely brilliant uh, to receive them. But yeah, one of those is going to win a T-shirt. Uh, before this show is out, we will be announcing the winner. Mm. Uh, woof. Exciting, exciting stuff. Um, now, moving on with our recap then. So episode 34, we discussed the possibility of whether or not there is life on Mars, um, as mm. David Bowie sang. <laughs> well, um, David Bowie, as well as uh, other prominent scientists, are speculating that yeah. life on Mars. <laughs> uh, following yeah. it. Indeed, and and indeed, looking at the whole panspermia um, <coughs> principle, it's not that unreasonable. We looked at uh, whether course, there was. Oh, yeah, go on. No, sorry, I was, I was, I was interrupting you, interrupting me, interrupting you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say our next episode. Then we looked at the uh, ancient atomic weapons of Mahanudaro, and we. Yeah. Definitely went down the rabbit hole a little bit, looking at the UFO connections with the Kennedy assassination in episode thirty-six. That that is a, that is a real rabbit hole, isn't it? That's a... <laughs> We're not afraid of rabbit holes. <laughs> hmm. Who really killed JFK and why? And that's it. The, oh. We talked about the burned memo. What about thirty-seven, thirty-eight, and thirty-nine then, Neil? Um, flight 2292, New Mexico UFO. Yes. American Airlines Flight 2292, heading from Cincinnati to Phoenix, encountered a UFO described mm -hmm. as long and cylindrical at a height of 37,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And the object was not seen on radar. No. Nope. So presumably not their radar either in the plane. They just saw it through the window. Um, 38, alien abductions versus sleep disorders. Yes. So this is when we get into the more prosaic explanations for for alien abductions that actually people are yes. like, having and some that, kind of problem. And that was that was you that brought that one to the table, of course, as a you know, I think I've got an answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or at least yes, we we should we you know if we're gonna be rigorous about this, this is at least something um yeah. we, should, we should talk about about how um how minds can play tricks on us as we hover on the edge of sleep yes definitely that you can you can wake up having dreamt something which um, it takes you a while to dispel and realize that it's not actually real that mm. something happened in a dream but um certainly worth looking at and uh and then we went on to intelligence director john ratcliffe yes yes and he'd uh that was a definitely interesting one. Um, then well, it was it was the director director Ratcliffe who gave us some um, some hints about what might be in the in the UFO information release. Yeah, that came up with the COVID bill. Absolutely. Um, after that, in episode forty, um, we had a bit of an Back update to <laughs> onto the crop circles that had been around in twenty twenty. Because uh, in the previous crop yeah. circle episode, I'd I'd speculated. Well, not even speculated. I wondered about whether or not mm. crop circles would be affected by COVID and the lockdown. Um, mm. And in episode forty, we looked into that and we found out no. <laughs> sorry for spoilers if no if people haven't mm. listened to episode 40 yet but no they weren't affected there were some amazing crop circles in 2020 there were some well, man-made ones looking, but yeah i mean if you're looking for an activity that you can participate in whilst whilst maintaining social distancing and, and not being indoors and whatever going out and faking crop circles fits the bill doesn't it do not do not do not fake crop circles it is a criminal offense and we would never encourage it's, anyone yes. to do that criminal damage <laughs> is it's, it's joking. Like vandalism, but, but um you won't get done for not wearing a mask while you're doing it <laughs> oh dear then um, we... episode 41 oh is, is it my turn your turn uh it's me it's me we're on yeah. uh 41 uh 41 we looked at 2001 new jersey turnpike ufo and again this is another example where you had massive amounts of witnesses and some 
very very credible mm. witnesses amongst those and in episode 42 now i really wanted something to tie us in with douglas adams um and of mm. course in the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy novels um the Golga Frinchams crash land on Earth and take over as the dominant species. So, it's a bit tenuous, uh, but I got there. Um, we discussed whether or not humans are indeed extraterrestrials, whether we have come from another planet. Again, it comes into this whole panspermia theory and principle mm. as well. Uh, so that was... That was quite an interesting one for for something that well, I thought just would be a bit of a fun topic. Um, yeah, hmm. there's definitely more to it. There's more to it, yeah, how, how our species evolved quite quickly from an earlier species, or, or did it indeed evolve, or did it evolve, evolve in parallel? The, the previous species of, our, of ourselves, which we identify with, had been around for a million years and was just suddenly just gone from every corner of the Earth, even when they find lost tribes tribes in on remote Pacific Islands or the depths of the Amazon. They're, they're Homo sapiens, they're not they're not Neanderthals. Mm. Um, so they were completely replaced by us. Although apparently Homo sapiens and Neanderthals did live um, side by side for a while. Now this next one, uh, I'm gonna say um, please be very careful <laughs> yes, <laughs> to use the given are, name. Remember we are live because we are live and, and I can't and edit about... it out this time. <laughs> <laughs> but this is our listener special where we talked to a, an aeronautical engineer called Barry. Yes. We didn't call him Boris because we thought that might send a, no. a set up a no. Also, he's a nice chap. So, yeah. yeah he's a Barry. lovely chap. He, is. He, we, he talked about technologies that are being developed that could have been mistaken for possibly for, for UFOs. Mm, yeah, and oh, they put out email for stories to cover the fact that they've developed some some new thing. Oh, the, the, yeah, the US Air Force have got this new jet that's amazing. No, no, it's not. It's a UFO. Yeah, um, I was. enjoyed that one. Yes, definitely. Um, very informative. It was indeed. It certainly. Um, mm. Now, I mean, I look at um, sort of UFO reports and and things now, and it has definitely coloured my my view of of when I'm looking at things. So yeah, it was it was really so thank mm. you, Barry, if if you're out there listening to this. Um Yeah, that was that was great, Barry. Do you want to give us forty four? Uh, one, one thing I took um, one thing that, one bit of information I remember taking away from that was was how actually what we see as UFOs would have a very low radar image. Mm. And that we that the military are working to develop aircraft with that same very very low radar profile mainly by removing the tail fin mm. because that provides a nice sail you know, to, to bounce a radar beam by not having that and steering the plane by the means um it, yeah it's, it's less easy to, to track it does although uh, of course there are many many cases of ufos being captured on radar yeah mm. they didn't quite just not all they weren't flying at the right angle not all of them. yeah it's almost um, like there's different types <laughs> yeah. there's the ones who can avoid our radar and there's the ones who don't give a shit about our radar. Yeah. What, what are you going to do about it? yeah as, as Tea Party Fox says the flying wing yep yep absolutely flying wing aircraft yeah um, what about 44 um, and 45 hoax, UFO hoaxes yes um, some of them yeah well all, all sorts of, there are all sorts of potential prosaic explanations for, for UFOs mm. and some of them have been found to be outright hoaxes. Yeah, absolutely. And some of them very, very convincing hoaxes as well. Mm. Mm. I remember seeing, well, I had a book when I was a kid and it was a picture. It looked like quite a convincing flying saucer. And it said this, someone had um, thrown a hub like a frisbee. Yes. Like a picture of it. And I, I know the one you're talking <laughs> about. Very, very famous photo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it just goes to show. Uh, it does a massive Good disservice. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, and I, I, I dare say it's done by people who don't believe in it anyway. Mm. Just like the people who create, you know, the villain in, in Scooby-Doo never turns out to be someone who actually believes in the paranormal. Or they've been paid just, by the government. They're just relying on their victims. Or they've been paid by the government to discredit. They've been, mm. Yes. Mm. 
yeah. to debunk it. <laughs> As we know, that, that, that there are, you know, we, we've, we've talked about uh, Philip Klass, mm. if I'm pronouncing his oh, right, yes. name right, who is a paid, a paid debunker. Yep. Yep. We know they exist. Who do, you know, you start talking about your encounter with a, with a UFO and he'll be there with his lie detector and strapping you into the seat and uh, and proving you a, well, calling you a liar. That's it. So next up, episode 45, The Ethereum Society, an international spiritual organisation dedicated to spreading and acting upon the teachings of advanced extraterrestrial intelligences as delivered to them by Englishman George King. It, yeah, it still strikes me how just genuine and lovely the people sound and you know mm -hmm. how open yeah it it really makes me think you know I'd, I'd love to speak to someone from the Ethereum society like a member but, uh, I'm but i don't sure know we anyone could, uh, we could. i don't know anyone in the Ethereum society Maybe yeah, um, you know you've got to you got to think more like journalists. I think we've got to think. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. Need to something from this. this contact society. them. Well, <laughs> but I don't know anyone. What can I do? <laughs> contact them and then say we'd love to interview yeah. someone? Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this space, listeners. Watch this space. Um, mm. Yeah, episode forty-six uh, is COVID nineteen from outer space is something we looked at because of course there was that meteorite seen uh not far from wuhan uh just a couple of weeks before the first cases started to be reported so we hmm. discussed that uh, i think we came to the conclusion that probably not um, yeah we, 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 it's not some sort of andromeda strain yeah. kind of um yeah. and if you want to read the famous um uh, Crichton, what's, what's his first name? Um, uh, uh, John, no, John Crichton's in Farscape, though. Yeah. Uh, but, Michael yeah, the, Crichton. The, the, Michael Crichton. Michael Crichton, yes. Very, very, very gripping novel, The Andromeda Strain, about mm. a satellite that crashes to Earth with a deadly... Yes. With a deadly... Um, bearing a deadly load that kills everyone in, in, in within a certain radius. Um, but I'm afraid the, the ending's a bit dis disappointed, but I, I, won't, uh, <laughs> I won't spoil it for you here. No spoilers, no spoilers. Uh, then no spoilers. Then we discussed the, and this was another one that, that you um, sort of prompted for us to talk about. Uh, we discussed a very interesting case of Phil Schneider, who had a firefight who? with aliens underground. Yeah, gunfight. Um, had a gunfight yeah. with extraterrestrials. Him and a Marine who didn't survive the encounter. That's it. The, no, I the mean, Marine he dragged him to safety, didn't he? Phil survived the encounter, but yeah. The, Phil, uh, so Phil got shot he with got, something. Yeah, yeah, he um, did. Um, that's a that's a good episode to go back and listen to and then uh, we discuss whether or not Close Encounters of the Third Kind which we've already mentioned tonight uh, <coughs> whether or not it was actually based on real events <coughs> excuse me, coughing away um, yeah for well and and uh, yeah, um, Spielberg when, when he worked in this did, did work um, his, his technical advisor was it a technical scientific consultant on the movie was J. Ellen Hynek, a name that's come up a few times in our podcasts. Um, he, he's the guy who originally came up with the um, with the the three types of encounter, which he's now expanded to. Is it seven types of encounter? Uh, I think it's seven. Oh, we might. Yeah, that, thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That the third type was a bit too broad. That actually the yeah. different subcategories of that. Well, the seventh um, goes to um, alien human hybrids, doesn't it? Yeah, whether whether we we breed with them and uh, yeah, uh, that's that's a type of encounter. I suppose breeding with someone is that's it. yeah, can't deny that's an encounter. Okay. Let, let's talk about the rest of our uh, more recent episodes before we reveal the winner of the T-shirt. Right. Um, so we we talked about um, Lieutenant. We, 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 sorry for Americans. Um, it, it's it's um, it's a, an affectation of the British military that they do not pronounce lieutenant as lieutenant. Every, um, they every time. didn't like it because it sounded too French. It's, I mean, we know what a lieutenant is because it's someone who's in new. He's he's a, a, a junior officer who acts with the authority of a higher officer. So he's in new of the colonel or whatever who orders his 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 seeing are, are carried out. But um, uh, the British don't like that. They don't. They don't. It sounded too French, and of course now they don't like it because it sounds too American. I, um, so I can predict this. Lieutenant, but uh, this, every no time way. we mention lieutenant on the show, 
you you can you tell us this? Well, I know time. that there are going to be people. Any anyone out there with any kind of British French aggression? Yes, lieutenant, not lieutenant. I'm not American. He he is but, American. Uh, Ryan Gray. Yeah, he is. So, so he is, he is lieutenant. lieutenant. <laughs> Navy pilot Lieutenant Ryan Gray gave an interview on 60 Minutes, talking mm. quite openly about the UFOs he'd witnessed in his career. And we hope that uh, more would come out about that in the release of information under, under the COVID bill. Hmm. So then we had a live special, which was the... Um, our first live special. Our first live special. This being <coughs> our second, second mm. live special. Yep. Yeah. So okay. um, 25th of June was the deadline set whereby... Um, under the terms of the $2.3 trillion COVID relief bill, um, government, security and intelligence and military agencies were required to declassify and make publicly available all the information they had on UFOs. It turned out to be a bit disappointing, didn't it? Mm. As I uh, recall. It, well, yes and no. Uh, yes and no. Do you know what? We're going to revisit that at some point in a future episode. I think we should, because that's uh, when people more... more um, I've had time to sit with it. I actually keep it a copy next to my desk. Tea party fox like that. Uh, Yeah, Paul. Paul, thanks for joining Mm. us, Paul. Um, Yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Mm. (laughs) Mm. Then what did we talk about in the episode after? Well, well, we had two episodes, because there was so much to talk about, about uh, Stan Romanek, uh, the young young logger, or the young um, forestry worker. Mm -hmm. No, that... Travis Walton. Oh, yeah, sorry. Travis, that was Travis <laughs> Walton. I'm getting confused. What is Stan Romanek? Stan Romanek um, is the guy who's had just about every kind of um, it, um, close encounter it's possible to have. He's had all seven. He so, has had maybe all Jay seven. Maybe J. Allen Hynek had to, had to expand his uh, <coughs> three to, to accommodate Stan Romanek, who, um, in, including um, breeding human alien mm. hybrids. Yeah. Yeah, it has these. Um, he, he's visited by these these spectral beings who's he's worked out are actually his children. Allegedly, so um, definitely an interesting one. Um, then we discussed <laughs> back to Nazis talking about the Tula Society. Um, yes, and then Neil, we keep mentioning him all the way through. We talked about Travis Walton. <laughs> Travis Walton, the young forestry worker who was abducted by aliens and brought down the wrath of the establishment when, uh, yeah. when his friends um, and that his was um, the story. I think, I think, I mean, that was last week's episode, um, of course, which brings us up to now. But I think it's fair to say that Travis Walton is probably, it, it, from the outside looking in, I'm, I'm not saying this hmm. as catcher, but it appears hmm. to me anyway. The, the Travis Walton case is probably one of the most compelling that you've found. I, I would say so, yeah, given what these people went through when they when they told this. I mean, yeah, this is where Philip Klass, the professional debunker, turned up with his mm. with his lie detector to debunk them. And um, people speculated, well, they were just doing it for attention to get credit, to get, you know, get on TV, make money out of it. But it backfired because everyone turned on them. But um, no, I, th- I think um, you know. I, I think you know. If if I was in that position, if I was in, in the position of his friends, and I'd seen Travis Walton disappear in, in those circumstances, you're, you're working in in an enormous forest, mm. hundreds of thousands of square miles. Um, I'd go back to the, the town and say, "Sorry, we lost one of our guys in the forest." We don't work, <laughs> and, and not say anything else. Yeah, I think I would. Well, if I'd have, if I was there and had presence of mind, because we've all got um, twenty twenty hindsight, haven't we? That's it. Yeah, That's as it. Ty said, he had no no fanciful anecdotes, no memory. Five days later, still thought he'd only been out for twenty minutes. It was only when his brother told him to feel his face, and he realised he'd, he'd grown a beard in that twenty minutes. That uh, yeah, yeah, that's that, it. Uh, he realised oh, he'd been, he'd been gone a bit longer than he realised. It's uh, it's probably one of the the first sort of alien abduction cases that I ever looked into, obviously long back. Mm. Um, yeah, totally. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing away. I, d- I don't have COVID. Uh, I get tested very regularly. Um, mm. It's not a new cough. Uh, I've had it for about 20 years. So, um, but yeah, it does get on me a little bit. 
when we've been mm. talking for a while. Um, so that brings us up to today. And here we are. That's a whole year in an hour and a half. Um, mm. My goodness. Um, oh, thank you very much, Ty. <laughs> uh, I, do, I, do, I do like to oil my beard on a daily basis. Uh, <laughs> um, so... In a moment, we'll be um, we'll be talking about what we have coming up next week for you, and it's a cracking, cracking episode. But before we do, uh, we have something we need to reveal, don't we? Don't we, Neil? Um, is this the thing we? Are we, we talking, are we talking about the competition? Or are we talking? Yes. About the no, the competition. Oh, the competition. <laughs> the competition right, okay. <laughs> The other thing was to stay our secret. Uh, no, oh no, we'll we'll tell people about that in a moment uh, as well. But okay. uh, I expect people are champing at the bit to hear who has won this t-shirt. So the competition was to win a t-shirt just like ours, incredibly exclusive, uh, with the artwork that you can see. Oh, you know, that side. Um, with the artwork on that you can see yeah. here by Sign Monstrous Art, and it's amazing artwork. We absolutely love mm. it. Um, all we asked you to do was give us a name for our grey alien friend. Um, and we'll recap our top four favourites. Uh, again, we'll alternate, but I'll start us off this time, Neil. We had okay. Dribble Teevingston. We had Frank. We had Graham. And we had Greg. Yep, so one of those is going to win a t-shirt and we will be in touch uh, with the person after the show um, by email to get um, your size and your address where you want it sent to. Uh, Neil, would you like to announce the winner? Um, I think I'll leave that to you, Stu. Okay, well, the winner... Uh, that we picked is that we picked Graham. Very sophisticated selection process. Yes, we liked Graham. Graham, especially after the listeners' cat, and that was won by Tom Court. So thank you so much uh, for putting that in, Graham. But. Oh, we, we even had drum rolls in our, in our we chat. We had drum rolls in the chat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben and Paul. Um, so, because the choosing from all the suggestions was so very, very, very difficult. <coughs> excuse me. We made that a lot of... really coming back, uh, isn't it? It really is. Um, we made a decision. We thought... Well, actually, Graham's a good Earth name for this creature. What if he had his own home name as well? So we actually picked out a second winner, didn't we, Neil? We did. And, and what was that? That one is Grace Wilson, who gave us Dribble Teevingston, or Dribble for short. So we will actually be sending out two T-shirts, uh, one to Tom and one to Grace. As I oh, say, this, this artwork is becoming less and less uh, unique. <laughs> passing uh, that's only six T-shirts out there. That's still pretty yeah, unique. Still, still uh, really, really, less than it was. It we are before. a we are a global podcast now. <laughs> yeah, more than six t-shirts. Um, but yes, but well done to everyone who made suggestions. Um, they've all been absolutely brilliant. So thank you all very, very, very much. Um, so there we are. Now you mentioned about uh, the other thing we were going to reveal, Neil. Um, yeah, well, we're going to be talking about. Is, we're back on crop circles again now. We are. We Tell are everyone. Circles, yes. Uh, well, Stu and I have been in touch with a filmmaker, uh, a maker of um, horror films, as it turns out. <laughs> but um, but no, to, to, to actually make a, a movie. Um, 
we, we did look to Netflix for um, for funding. They had a competition, but uh, unfortunately we weren't successful. They didn't like <laughs> our proposal. Maybe it was just our proposal. Maybe you know you got to get get some practice at this thing. But yes, we are looking um, sometime between the autumn or between the autumn and beginning of middle of next year to um to make a movie about a visit to a crop circle. A documentary, in fact, not a movie because that's a that's that's a documentary. So, yeah, sounds a documentary, more a documentary, a documentary film about. <laughs> we're making our own documentary film. And uh, still be taking me to a crop circle and saying that this is made by UFO and I'll be saying that it's bollocks. Um, well. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and what happens then? Find out what happens. That's the script sorted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll be we'll be looking into things like the history Try of some crop meat, circles. Try us when we're filming. Oh, fantastic! Um, absolutely. Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> In, in, definitely but yeah we'll be looking into the history of crop circles we'll be looking into um interviewing sort of experts in it uh because as much as i i might have been looking into them for 20 years i am by no means an expert at all uh i'm a total layman mm. so we'll be getting some real nitty-gritty stuff into it um we will and we'll fly our drones and we'll be flying drones as well. I think that's the thing you're most excited about, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but you know what? Listen, if if you can help us out here, um, you can message us at aliensexplored at gmail dot com. And if there is, I mean, tell us what you would like to see in a documentary like this. Um, we're keeping it very much in the same sort of vein as Aliens Explored in that our original idea was rather than so so most ufo podcasts either come from the point of view of they believe or they debunk there's kind of no middle ground there um so that was what we wanted to do was like basically this middle ground that's why neil and i we get together <laughs> and we we argue I can um, find the middle ground. Although I do like T Party <laughs> Fox idea, but it's basically the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got an old script. So for... it's going to be found footage. <laughs> I, I I have the, a found footage script that I put together. Oh my goodness, probably about ten years ago, uh, connected with crop circles. Um, it was mm. awful. Um, <laughs> looking back at it, um, but yeah. So, if there's anything, any aspect well, you, of Ty. crop circles yeah. that you'd like us to include in the documentary, do let us know. Um, yeah, messages uh, at aliensexplored at gmail dot com. We we would love to hear what you would like to see from it. Mm. So, Ty, that, that that statement you just made, that that first bit is is true, but the second part. Maybe not so true anymore. Uh, logic. Uh, logical. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a passionate... You, you get... I mean, we both get very, very passionate. Um, I mean, it must sound yeah. to the listeners like we're about to fall out when we do our recordings. Mm. Do you think, Neil? Well, that, that first time I, I, I poo-pooed crop circles. <laughs> came close, you know. I suddenly, you, know, you suddenly, you, you feel the ice cracking beneath your feet. You, know? you were glad we were doing this over Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, found footage of a man dying. One of us. Yeah. It's just a camera lying on the ground, and you can see my my foot. <laughs> oh dear. no we do get we do get heated and passionate but um but Ooh. just to reassure our listeners neil and i have been friends for a long time um we absolutely do not fall out because uh, i'm worried that people worry about that you know nobody's ever said it but no no it's too serious a matter uh death by planks of wood yeah <laughs> um, there we go Okay, well, that brings us to the end of this special. Um, my goodness, well, thank you all so much for, for joining us. This this has been absolutely amazing. Had so much fun looking uh, uh, back. And, and for your input as well, and some very kind comments. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, keep the kind comments coming. <laughs> love hearing those. <laughs> we love having love being stroked. <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. Um, but join us next week 
when we will be discussing the very, very famous Project Blue Book. There yes. We go. Project yeah. Blue Book. Yeah, looking forward to getting into that one in some nitty gritty detail. Um, so, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And I, I look forward to seeing you all soon. I'm afraid, to, yeah, it's the end story. But yeah, yeah Blue Book. Yes. Um, Captain uh, Quinn, Team Posey Fox, Ben Canal, that's one. Well. And we look forward to presenting that to you. Absolutely. In the meantime, keep watching this Twitch stream and the skies. Take care. <laughs> Bye, we'll everyone. Next time. Bye. 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 Aliens Explored is a Fecal Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter or Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit us on aliensexplored.com.